Hi, uh, welcome to Career Magic again. My name is Nitin Kulkarni and today we are going to explore uh, an interesting topic, the topic, the mundane topic actually of uh, collaboration and cooperation. And we all know we are in, in the corporate world and otherwise we are always encouraged to collaborate, cooperate, give, help, etc. It's looked upon as a very, very desirable behavior. However, it is not as simple as that. So what we see in the real world is that if you are a giver, a cooperator unconditionally, you can actually get left behind because you are work, you are helping other people with their priorities and then you always run into some people who will not help you but you continue to help them and it is a problem. So that's what we see in the corporate world. So collaboration and cooperation is a little tricky. Now. Uh, so, so how do we figure out what our strategy should be? Now, uh, there is a so we are going to go back and look at some research. So there is a, there is a professor at the University of Michigan, uh, someone called Robert Axelrod, who has spent decades researching the nature of collaboration, cooperation, what works well, etc. And so we'll talk about some of his research and the lessons from it. But before before we do that. I'm going to tell you about a game, a, a game that uh, uh, is quite commonly played to demonstrate what happens with collaboration and trust. It, trust. It's a game called the Prisoner's Dilemma. You might have heard of it. So what happens? So, the, so the basic form of this game is that there are two friends who rob a bank, uh, but they are not very good at getting away. So they get arrested, and the cops are interrogating them in two separate rooms. They are interrogating separately and each one is asked a question about the guilt of the other person. Now the game is that if A and B both betray each other, they are both going to give get three years in prison. Okay. But if A betrays B and says yes B is guilty but B does not, you know B keeps their uh, keeps the trust because they agreed that they will not betray each other b keeps the trust and does not betray then b gets 5 years loses big and a gets away scot free and the same thing happens the other way if a does not betray but b betrays then a gets 5 years in prison prison and b gets away scot free if they both keep quiet don't say anything, both of them get one year in prison. So this is the game, it's a simulation. And this, there are other variations. There is one variation that I use in my workshops where you, you, you decide to, do, to play a certain card. Um, so you can either play that card or betray. Betrayal gives you a certain number of points. Trusting gives you a lower number of positive points. So the only way both the, the, the overall uh, score for the whole team is positive is both trust each other and uh, you know uh, keep their commitments help each other yeah so that's the game it is a game that is used to demonstrate collaboration and and trust and how trust can be betrayed broken etc so what now back to robert axelrod what robert axelrod in 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 one of his experiments did was he said okay let us find out when two people or many people are playing this game and there is a transaction between two people what happens if one uh, betrays and the other uh, uh, you know does not betray other cooperates and then this cycle goes on for over a period of time what happens so he invited algorithms on, on this sort of interaction. So for instance, one algorithm was uh, that you always uh, cooperate. You always cooperate irrespective of what the other algorithm or the other person is doing. You always cooperate. You are completely selfless. Another algorithm could be that you always betray. You do not cooperate. Yeah, you are selfish. So it doesn't matter what the other uh, party does you always betray. Another algorithm could be that you do these things at random. You sometimes collaborate, sometimes you don't, etc. And so on. So he received 
he played this game with 14 algorithms so what he did was he pitted them against each other in a computer simulation and then the scoring was done based on this kind of a concept the prisoner's dilemma concept so if they both col collaborated they got something positive if one betrayed other collaborated then the collaborator lost out the betrayer won big and you know that sort of thing so at the end of this game after he did the simulation for a period of time he found that there was one algorithm which beat all other algorithms hands down no contest big win do you know what that algorithm was that one big that algorithm was called tft tft means tit for tat now we know that from our childhood right we said okay if you are not going to give me this candy then i am also not going to give you this you know but yeah if you if you give me some some good stuff then i'll you know tomorrow i'll get something good for you so tit for tat is you do to the other what the other does to you but with a small difference the tit for tat algorithm in this simulation always cooperated first irrespective of whatever the other person did so if the even if the other person betrayed this tit for tat would cooperate and but after the first move default move tit for tat would completely reciprocate whatever the other party did and it ended up winning big so axel rod said okay maybe this was by chance let's see let's see let's get a few other strategies in so next time he played this simulation with 60 plus um uh, algorithms all kinds of creative algorithms on how you could work with another person you know cooperate betray when to do what and so on when they played this again guess what who won tit for tat once again won in a landslide no other algorithm could keep up with it and why does this happen in fact in uh, after that uh, axel rod did more experiments and found that <clears throat> excuse me the only way tit for tat can the results of tit for tat can be improved is by throwing in more random cooperation rather than more betrayal that's the only way to improve uh, the tit for tat <clears throat> algorithm he called it the generous tit for tat uh but but again it was tit for tat it was not like always cooperating it still was tit for tat why was it winning and if you if you really think about it think about the what what tit for tat is tit for tat is completely trustworthy you know what you are going to get from tit for tat if you col collaborate with this person this person is going to help you but if you do not this person is going to say sorry i don't have time for you so you know what to expect you can trust them completely because you know that tomorrow if i change my behavior and start helping them i will get their cooperation the second thing that happens with tit for tat is that tit for tat scores big wins with people who collaborate with them but do not does not waste their time with people who refuse to collaborate so their energy is spent on collaborative winning strategies and not spent on helping others where they are not going to get any collaboration so they are choosy about how they work with other people yeah tit for tat so that is the second the third really important lesson from tit for tat is that tit for tat does not hold any grudges so i if you are you know uh, not collaborating with me i am not collaborating not collaborating suddenly you change your behavior start collaborating i will not hold any grudges and i'll start collaborating with you now our gains get multiplied and we start working great together yeah so that is why tit for tat so what what is the lesson for us in real life in real life what it tells us is we must our default behavior must be to work with others collaborate help that must be our default behavior but we have to be choosy for with people who are not willing to cooperate who act selfishly we should demand a price for their collaboration we should tell them sorry i don't have time for you but if you collaborate with me i am happy to work with you yeah so 
people in that process who change their behavior now start becoming my allies with whom i can multiply my gains so tit the other thing so that is the other thing tit for tat does is it can turn people around and because it does not hold grudges so in real life that's what we should do default behavior work with others uh don't uh, you know waste your time with with selfish people try to turn them around but if they do turn around don't hold grudges and work with them that is the secret of people who are very very successful in life so uh, see if you can try that in uh, in your uh, in your life um, and if you like what you heard uh, make sure you do like uh, this video and do subscribe to my channel um so that you get notifications on what other interesting stuff like this is is being posted so uh that's it for today thank you very much and uh wish you the very best